Hey there, Graph fans. Oh, or should I say all three of you watching? Let's be honest. Launching a channel dedicated to semantic what? technologies in 2025 is like investing in DVDs after Netflix. Either insanely brave or gloriously dumb. You decide. Anyway, here we are, diving headfirst into Tim Berners-Lee's grand vision. Bam, motherfucker! The semantic web. Why? Well, clearly because I enjoy pain. So back in early 2000s, Sir Tim himself, yep, the same guy who invented the web and then casually forgot to patent it, had another big idea. The semantic web. Picture it. A futuristic paradise where data wasn't just dumb documents, but smart, interconnected, meaningful bits of knowledge. Computers would understand context, do your chores, find your keys, and probably even sit through your pointless Zoom meetings. You know, those meetings where nobody says anything, but your presence is somehow still mandatory? Yeah, those. They literally called it the semantic web layer cake. Seriously? Who names these things? Hey, let's slap RDF, OWL, XML, and Sparkle together in layers and see who chokes first. Spoiler alert, pretty much everyone, but the hype. Ooh, the hype was real. Even Google jumped in. Remember those fancy, rich snippets? The restaurant stars, recipe calories, and prices right in your search results? Yep, thanks, Semantic Web. Yahoo and Bing tried too, but who cares, right? I mean, Yahoo launched Search Monkey. Nope, that's not a joke. IBM Watson even used Semantic Tech to win Jeopardy. This is Jeopardy, the IBM challenge. Remember that? I bet no. Watson knew stuff partly thanks to semantic graphs and structured data. Suddenly, enterprise architects everywhere started throwing semantic layers on everything. Finance healthcare supply chains. Because relational databases were choking on complex queries like recommending other George Lucas films besides Star Wars. <laughs> Then 2012 hit, and Google proudly launched its knowledge graph, moving search from strings to things. Suddenly, Google wasn't just matching keywords. It actually understood whether you meant Taj Mahal the monument, the musician, the restaurant, or some obscure casino. Meanwhile, big names like Oracle started adding RDF support, and startups like Franz Inc. jumped on the triple store bandwagon, convinced semantics were about to revolutionize data management. But wait, here comes the brutal plot twist. Despite the promising hype, the semantic web went from tech's golden child to misunderstood teenager really fast, getting webmasters to painstakingly hand code complicated RDF and XML metadata about as enjoyable as chewing aluminum foil wasn't exactly a winning strategy. And ontologies? Oh no, suddenly that protege pizza tutorial is coming back to haunt me. Fantastic idea. Let's globally agree on exactly how to describe a pizza. Seriously, what could go wrong? Answer, literally everything. Performance-wise, early semantic reasoning engines were painfully slow. Turns out, logical inference on millions of data points using 2000s-era hardware was like trying to run Windows 11 on a Nokia. Ambitious? Sure. Practical? No! Oh, and don't get me started on metadata quality. Remember the good old days of meta tag spamming from the 90s? Search engines learned their lesson. Never trust users. Surprise, surprise. When publishers could freely add structured metadata, spam Spammers jumped at the chance to tag everything as free iPhones. Meanwhile, developers glanced at RDF and OWL and quickly said, Nah, we're good. JSON and REST APIs are simpler, thanks. And honestly, who could blame them? The semantic web tried boiling the ocean when all we wanted was a glass of water. Plus, let's not forget the classic chicken and egg situation. If you're using semantic web tech and literally no one else is, the value is roughly zero. Companies didn't adopt it because nobody else was. Mm. And nobody else adopted it because, well, you get it. Funny thing is, even today, after 25 years of semantic web, knowledge graphs, etc., we all have colleagues. Yes, those SQL wizards who can write joins in their sleep, who still don't even realize graph databases exist. They think Sparkle is some typo from a PowerPoint slide. Or worse, a CQL ripoff invented by hipsters. Bless their relational hearts. Anyway, so around 2015, some clever marketing guru looked at the semantic web dumpster fire and said, hey, let's call it knowledge graphs instead. Way catchier. Basically, they simplified, repackaged, and reheated heated semantic web concepts like day-old pizza. Google led this gourmet revival because, as we all know, Google's specialty is recycling old ideas and pretending they're revolutionary. Suddenly, companies everywhere started throwing around buzzwords like enterprise knowledge graphs, semantic layers, and my personal favorite, reasoning. Yep, reasoning. Because let's face it, when your software struggles with actual complexity, you sprinkle a little graph magic, slap on a fancy new name, and voila, innovation. For a while, even that didn't spark much excitement. But now, in the LLM era, is there finally a promising comeback? Well, no one knows exactly, but it seems like ChatGPT and his AI friends, or enemies, suddenly reminded everyone. Oh, structured data, contextual meaning, and machine-readable data? Wait, didn't that Tim guy talk about this decades ago? Yes, folks. The semantic web had to patiently wait until AI became trendy enough to resurrect it from the forgotten tech graveyard. Today, everyone's suddenly preaching about structured data, nodding wisely and repeating garbage in, garbage out, as if they'd known it all along. Plus, 
there's the obsession with stuff like explainable AI, retrieval augmented generation, autonomous agents. Guess what? They all link back somehow to semantic tech. Yep, those structured, connected knowledge graphs aren't just buzzwords anymore. They're literally helping orchestrating tasks, even explain AI logic without sounding like it's hallucinating or having some existential crisis. Apparently, structured semantic data processing even uses less energy compared to sorting through mountains of unstructured chaos. Who knew going green was as simple as being organized? And here's the kicker. This isn't just fluffy theory and flashy marketing. Stardog, one of the big shot triple stores, proudly claims 100% hallucination-free AI data assistance. Trendy developer libraries like Langchain now openly brag about supporting W3C standards, and Llama Index has brought knowledge graphs back into the spotlight. Oh, and get this, in 2024, Samsung, yep, a smartphone giant, casually snapped up Oxford Semantic Technologies, putting RD Fox-powered AI directly into the Galaxy S25. Now your phone can offer hyper-personalized experiences and stop hallucinating, because let's be real, nobody wants their smartphone having a midlife crisis. Every single month now, dozens of new papers, implementations, and fancy updates on knowledge graphs and AI hit the web. It's almost like the semantic web is finally becoming relevant after 20-something years. Who could have predicted that, huh? Speculation time. Maybe the semantic web vision never actually failed. It just got outsourced, simplified, and quietly rebranded as something normal developers might actually use without losing their minds. Gartner predicts half of new AI projects will use knowledge graphs by 2025. Thanks, Gartner. Only took you 25 years to figure that out. Very insightful. Even Tim Berners-Lee's latest decentralized web projects still lean heavily on semantic principles. Solid, anyone? Maybe another video about it. You really can't escape semantics. It keeps sneaking in the back door, quietly reshaping things whether we like it or not. But let's agree on something. The semantic web was overly ambitious, absurdly complicated, and probably a bit naive. Yet the core ideas, machine-readable meaning, linked knowledge, structured context, were absolutely spot on. We need the dust from this current LLM hype storm to settle first. Until then, let's sit back, pretend we knew it all along, and see how far semantic tech will take us.